Welcome, everybody, to a very special Q&A. My name is Josh Chernoff, and this is a, a little bit of a preview for the podcast, The After Chat, that will be debuting September 7th, 2018. Josh, now, you we- forgot to say that you were going to be hosting my podcast. So if you wouldn't mind saying that, and then I'll come right back, okay? Sure. Bill, uh, whatever you say. It's uh, Legend calls the shots. Welcome, everybody, to a very special Q&A. My name is Josh Chernoff, and I am your host, and we'll be hosting the new podcast, The After Chat, coming out September 7th, 2018. Now, we asked all of you to please come to our social media, our Facebook page, facebook.com slash The After Chat, and uh, give us a couple of likes, maybe share it with some friends. And if we reached a certain milestone number, we were going to bring you a special Q&A with the man himself, Bill Apter. Well, you guys are amazing. Fabulous. Far exceeded the number that we were hoping for. And in such a short time. And that is why we are here Thank today you. to Thank do you. this Thank you. Q&A Thank for you. Can Thank I also you. just say, while we're talking about yeah. uh, these incredible fans that we already have for a podcast that hasn't even aired yet, we have three Five star reviews on our Facebook yes, page. Yes, yes. Thank you all so very much. I mean, the the love that you sent our way has just been. I mean, I got goosebumps when. Yeah, I, I think that has to speak to the quality of fan more than it even speaks to us. It can't speak to the podcast. I'd like to think we're going to live up to those five stars for sure. But uh, man, no, we're going to live up to ten. Oh wow! Yeah, going to be a ten star podcast. So. People can find us all over social media now. That is true. We've upped the ante of social media. Tell them where they can find us. Well, you can find us on Twitter yeah. at the After Chat. Now, mm-hmm. of course, also if you want to talk to us, I'm at So Says Chernoff, and you're at at After One Wrestling. So you know, yeah. feel free That's to, the to talk to one, all of us. That's the word. number one. Yes. Feel free to talk to all of us about that, or just come to the After Chat. Yeah, come yeah, to the after yeah, chat. Yeah. Uh, we also have an Instagram, which I am really excited about. Yeah. I, I've always kind of been, but, a, I'm, I'm a huge fan of memorabilia. But there's nothing on it just yet. Oh, there will be. By the time you're seeing this, there is going to be Instagram, the after chat. That's the handle. Of what? Making, what, what, what are you planning? He's, he's in charge of Instagram. I don't even know what is going to be on there, but some piece of the amazing memorabilia that you have here and a description of what it is. I mean, maybe like the mask that Mil Mascaris wore when he debuted at Madison Square Garden, stuff like that. Something like that, but wow. it's going to be, if you're seeing it here, you're not seeing it as up close and personal as you're going to be able to see it on Instagram. So I'm actually, I, I might even be more excited about the Instagram page, getting to to share all of this amazing memorabilia that you yeah. have here, uh, as well as some old pictures. Yeah, old pictures uh, and old audio tapes. I have back from the 70s, the early 70s, all the way through the 90s, I kept all the old classic audio interviews I did with all the big, biggest name wrestlers in the entire world, in the entire world, and that's going to be right here on the after chat. Yeah, and I'm yeah. looking forward to all of that stuff. And we'll, we'll take a picture of uh, what the cassette looks like, uh, so you don't have to go to Google and see what an audio cassette looked like, right? Oh, that's very kind of yeah, you. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank uh, you. Also, I want to encourage you to check out theafterchat.com. That's mm-hmm. going to bring you right over to Pro Wrestling Tees. It's linked directly to Pro Wrestling Tees right now. So you can check out all of the new shirts that we have here. You know and, what uh, I'm doing, right? I, I, you're, you're, I'm you're adjusting. You're fixing that comb over Well, no, I'm there. not fixing it. It's not broken, but ah. I, I'm adjusting. You have to respect the comb over, Josh. If we're going to do this... And if you or anyone you know has a comb over, they would probably be into the Respect the Comb Over t-shirt. I can't believe that there that is, is a real t-shirt. Yeah. It is our top seller. It is. Uh, and and for good reason. It's a pretty awesome shirt. I have one on its way right now. Uh, you have you have that, so I don't even know if you need the shirt. No, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, because I want people to respect the comb over. But it's funny, you mentioned uh, is uh, that that's not broken, uh, that brings about two things. One, a t-shirt at theafterchat.com. Is wrestling fixed? Um, I didn't know it was broken, which brings me to always showing my book published by ECW Press. It's been out three years. 
this October. Wow. Is wrestling fixed? I didn't Let's know it was broke. Well, oh, what? Am I? One, two, three, everybody. I, I didn't, didn't know, know it was, was broken. broken. The book is still out there on Amazon.com or your favorite bookstore. But the new Is Wrestling Fixed? I Didn't Know It Was Broken t-shirt blows away the old one. And it's the kind of shirt that, you know, what we wanted to do, we we love the support you guys have shown. Yeah. And, in, and we've already had people sending us messages asking, will there be... Merch. I know you like the Mer- word merch. I like merch. the word merch, not merchandise. Uh, not merchandise, merch. but people have been asking, and which I have to tell you, we really appreciate. I mean, that's amazing. Again, you're asking if we have merchandise. We haven't even given you a podcast yet, uh, but we really love the support you want to show. So we went and we said, we want shirts that you're going to want to wear. We don't yeah. want you to buy a shirt Fun that shirts. shows up. Yeah, and you say, I yeah, it's fine, but it's not really something I'd want to wear. You're going to want to wear these shirts. You might even want to wear them to work. You know, a lot of people realize that, and some don't, that the cardboard belt, the cardboard belt of championship office wrestling, cow, was how I made a lot of my reputation in the pro wrestling business. I was champion of the office at the magazines that I worked for. The cow champion. And then... You upgraded, and if I might, go I down, didn't upgrade. If I might go down to the basement real quick. I'm just going to do go this. Down here. So Reggie Parks, the man who is the master belt maker of all time, decided, why have cardboard when you deserve the cow belt, the real cow belt? So you people out there who have sent me emails and back in the '70s and '80s letters saying that. How can I become the cow champion? Championship office wrestling of your office? Guess what? You can do it. Now Now you can with this amazing cow belt t-shirt. Yes, you can actually go to work and it has, as you can see here, it has a a, dress shirt. It it, it looks just, it's the dressiest shirt I've ever seen. So you guys can get the the cow championship wrestling shirt, the respect the comb over shirt, the is wrestling fixed. I didn't know it was broken shirt. And of course, if you really want to just show your love for the podcast itself, the After Chat logo shirt. That's a necessary. Yeah, that, I, I that's think everybody a necessary needs to have that. shirt. Yeah. 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 I've got one coming. Yes, me too. Yeah. Me too. Well, that's at least two of them. No, we we're actually surprised how many of these without I've gotten the podcast. Wrestlers, I've gotten wrestlers that have heard about the podcast saying to me, if you have t-shirts, we want to wear them. Where do we get them from? Hey, and that brings us right back to Instagram because yeah. if those wrestlers get those shirts, we will make sure that they take a picture and they will send that picture to us and we will post it on our Instagram. Wait so a minute. So you can see them wearing that Wait shirt. Wait a minute. But more important than the wrestlers mm-hmm. are, are people out there, the After Chat fans. If you send us a picture of you posed in an After Chat or any of our t-shirts that you could find at Pro Wrestling Tees, the Fabulous Four, you know what? I'm going to send them a free After Chat DVD. Really? Yeah. So if they have any of the four shirts or all four shirts? All four shirts. Wow. Okay. So so this is for the super fans. Yes. The Fabulous Four shirts. Okay. So if you get that is the, the After comb over Ch- shirt. The comb over After Chat logo. Is wrestling fixed? I didn't know it was broken. And the cow belt. Right. So if you get all four of those shirts. You get a souvenir after Chad DVD of some of the classic interviews, highlights of some of the classic interviews. This is video DVD of all time. And what are the chances this can be personalized and signed? Oh, absolutely. You? That That's, wow. yes, definitely. Okay. Right here from After's Alley. It will be personalized and signed and sent right to your front door, if you will. Well, that is pretty exciting. Yes. And uh, I think at this point, maybe we should uh, get to the reason why we're here. Well, the reason we're here is because there's a segment on the show yes. every week called Ask After. And by the way, every week, this segment will be sponsored by a particular sponsor. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because if you would like to sponsor the After Chat podcast Them? or any of the segments, you, yeah. any of you out there, yeah, you too, you can send a message over to the Facebook page. Absolutely, uh, you can send a direct message over on Twitter. Yeah, uh, or you can just email the After Chat at mm-hmm. gmail dot com. Uh, we would love to hear from you, and we would love to help uh, promote whatever it is that that you have. You know, we do have a few 
prime spots left. The major, uh, the major part of the advertising has already pretty much been taken, That's but we true. do have some of the uh, less costly uh, spots still available, correct? You, you can't beat less costly. Yes, yes. So, yeah. That'd be a good so, name for a wrestler. So, so Ladies and gentlemen, less costly. Wow. And he works cheap. And on that note, I think it's time we head on over to hashtag Ask Aptor. All right. This one comes to us from Roger Kistler. Hey, Roger. Where can I get your book that will take a money order as payment as I don't have a credit or debit card? That's a great first question. Email me at bapter at onewrestling.com. Be after at onewrestling.com. That's the number one, not the word, because onewrestling.com, as you know, is my home on the internet, and we will work that out. I, we might even meet somewhere uh, in person. Maybe we'll grab a slice of pizza together. All right, calm down now. And, and, and rather than paying me for the book, you can buy the pizza. Thank God you said pizza. Joe James has a question. How did you get the job at ringside back in the WWWF days? Wow. Well, that first of all, that's in my book, of course. But I was a, uh, I was a huge wrestling fan growing up. And uh, I went to work for the company that eventually put out Pro Wrestling Illustrated. But back then in the uh, early 70s, they were doing the wrestler and inside wrestling. Sure. And I was hired by Stanley Weston, who was my mentor, and he was the publisher of those magazines. And uh, he bought me, and where is it? That See that? Not that camera. He bought me, oh, right here. He bought me a $49 Minolta camera that took film. And he said to me, if you want to shoot pictures, I want to see what you can do with this thing. So he sent me to the matches with this. But before this, when I was a kid, I used to run up to ringside at Sunnyside Garden in Queens, New York, mm -hmm. little kid, and I'd run up with a little Instamatic camera, Google it, and take a picture and run back to my seat. So that was kind of inborn, but it was because of my work with the, um, with the magazines that I became a ringside photographer. Do you remember any of the matches that night, the first time you shot with that camera? Yeah, actually, uh, it was at Sunnyside Garden, and this was my first time at ringside. Uh, Beppo Mongol, who oh. eventually became uh, Nikolai Volkov against Manuel Soto. Okay. Uh, Bearcat Wright was on the show. Sweet Daddy Siki was on the show. Bearcat and, Wrong, too. Yes. How did you know that? Yeah. Yes. Also, Bearcat Left. Well, that was after the match. Oh. David S. Frederick. Hey, David S. Frederick. This is the start of a trifecta of questions from David. Okay. With the start of WrestleMania in the 1985-1986 period, did you see it becoming what it is now? This is before WrestleMania 3 is 93,000 people. No, I didn't. Actually, uh, on the WWE Network, I'm a talking head on the very first start of WrestleMania show. You see, on the network, there, on the you're a talking WWE. head. Yes. But here on the after chat, you get the whole... The whole thing here. The pythons, brother. Yikes. But uh, did I ever think... No, I thought Vince McMahon was going to lose, uh, uh, lose his shirt, his pants, his family, everything. I really did. Uh, it was a gamble that he took. And then when I, when I started seeing uh, the lineup of celebrities like Muhammad Ali and Liberace and mm. Billy Martin from the New York Yankees... Um, I said, my God, what he's going out of his way to do here, uh, this could be a major disaster because back then people were wrestling fans. There was no such thing as sports entertainment back then. So I really, no, I, I couldn't see it getting to, uh, uh, to where the road has taken it today. It's just simply amazing what it's become. It was a great question and a great answer. And well, here's another you. question from David S. Frederick. Your opinion of wrestling's most jaw-dropping, shocking moment, you, Mr. Bill Apter, yes. didn't see coming. There are a good half a dozen, but the one oh, that stands no, out to one. him no, no. was Barry Windham joining the Horsemen. Many, he, he suggests, would say uh, Brett and Sean in Montreal. No. What do you say? No. Hang on. 
the night that Hulk Hogan, the night that Hulk Hogan joined the NWO. Bash at the Beach. To me, that was the most shit. That, even when Shane McMahon showed up on, uh, on WCW to take over WCW, everybody figured that was going to come. But Hulk Hogan changing from the, the, the most pure man in pro wrestling. Say your prayers, take your vitamins, and be true to yourself, brother. When he became this guy, when he dropped that leg drop onto Randy Savage, yeah, I was sitting there watching that, and I couldn't believe it. My son Brandon was with me there. We sat there like, and to this day when I think about it, my jaw still drops, and all the garbage that the fans threw in the, in the ring, it was just one of the most, un, it was the most unbelievable moment uh, I've, I've seen because... Man, shocked me. The last question from David S. Frederick. Wow. Uh, from the 1980s through the 1990s, okay. who would you say is the most underused, he says unrated, uh, should have been a star, so maybe underrated is what he's going for there. Uh, 1980s, 1990s, who would you say was maybe the most underrated? Maybe didn't reach the potential that you think could Brett have. Armstrong. Okay. Brett I've Armstrong. I've heard that before. Brett Armstrong, he used my... Wrestling trunks, B.A.? Ah, yes. yes. But Brett Armstrong was the consummate professional who uh, I think in these days had he survived and uh, been brought into NXT, he would have been the shining star of that company. I really do. Yeah, he never got... Uh, back then, as you know, we all saw him on cable TV on the Turner Network. Um, but I never thought that he got to where he could have been in the days when he was alive, I think he could have been a bigger star. I really do. Yeah. That's a really good set of questions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again, uh, David S. Frederick, for yeah. that. We really appreciate Where's it. Where's he from? Uh, I don't have it on here. Okay. Thank you, David. Great questions. Uh, Moving right along yeah, here. Yeah. Dallas Goff. Any related to Dallas Page? I'm going to probably say no. Okay. I don't think so either. Um... What do you think of... And so, okay, this question, I read this before, and no, this is a judge-free zone. Read it again. But uh, I'm not sure. Some of this, this is a little bit of rumor. So we're going to say, if this is in fact true, which okay. I'm suspicious that it's really I'm not. I'm dying to know what this is. What do you think of Vince trying to get talent from All In and MLW and basically trying to sabotage the shows, Ooh. but has said repeatedly that during the territory days... When he did this, it was not to put anyone out of business. Whew. What a question. Um, I think that WWE right now is strong enough where they really don't have to worry about other people. Um, taking people from, I mean, Matt Riddle has been the guy that's been talked about just about more right. than there's a there's than a question anyone. about him as well. Yeah, that that's that's talking about more. Uh, I haven't seen any uh, real action and movement of WWE, and not just Vince. There's a lot of people in that company that mm -hmm. do this, uh, uh, do do the business. But I haven't really seen them trying to uh, to poach. Yeah, any, uh, Donna Peruzzo, maybe. I you know. But, all in specifically. All in isn't a wrestling promotion. It's it's an event. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, by the way, we'll be all in. Well, you're covering it for the after chat. I am. I will yes. be at Starcast. Yes. yes. Uh, and all in. Well, let's let's get back to the question though. I don't want to go on. Yeah. So the question. So tangent. I mean, well, my my. What's the bottom line question here? The bottom line question of that. Because I'm a little confused by your question, but I, I haven't He's seen asking him going what, out what do you to... what do you think about Vince trying to take talent away from All In and MLW? And I, I don't think that he is. No, honestly, I, 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 I think don't, that's I, just a I rumor. I haven't seen if 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 he's been doing it, it's not blatant to me at this point. Yeah, it, it, I just don't think, especially for a one-off show. Yeah. That. It's really on the WWE's radar to steal talent well, so that they minute, can't wait appear a at a show that wait people already... Ray Mysterio Jr. is going to be part of StarCast. We know that. Yeah, and that which in and of itself... Be, which, me, that, which is part of All In. Right, and in so, and of itself kind of makes me feel like the WWE yeah, really he, isn't he's, trying he's, to... Uh, he, he's, he is uh, part of the WWE uh, 
uh, roster at times. And yeah, I, I, he's going to be in the I new can't game. see Vince McMahon doing what he did back in the territory days, going, oh, Ray, I had Vince McMahon, uh, I'd appreciate it if you don't show up on that show. I can't see him doing that. No, I, I can't I really see can't. it here, uh, sounding like that either. Yeah. I um, thought, I thought no, that was that was fine. Good. That was good. I'm just, You're fired! Wondering. Not really. Just kidding. All right. Uh, Paul okay. Skivers. Hey, Paul Skivers. What are your thoughts on the all-women's pay-per-view evolution that oh, was just announced? I love it. I think I think it's a, it's a great idea. There have been, back in the old days, um, there were some promotions that had all-girls cards, but mm-hmm. not to the extent to the pay-per-view capacity yeah, like that the whole world will be seeing this. Uh, is it about time? Yeah, it definitely is about time. And I love how the... WWE. A lot of people say that they're patting themselves on the back for getting this whole girls' movement going when it's been girls have been trying for years to do this, but this is on the largest sports entertainment stage in the world. The WWE Network, pay per view, it's everywhere. So yeah, no, I'm I'm psyched for this. I, I really what do you want to see as the main event? Um, I would have to assume they're probably going to have something to do with uh, either Ronda Rousey or uh, maybe Alexa Bliss, Charlotte Flair. I want to see Charlotte know. Flair, Ronda I would Rousey. Love to see. Hmm. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm curious. I know all the championships are going to be yeah. defended, including yeah. NXT. Yeah. So I'm curious if maybe, because I'm pretty sure they're on separate brands, if there'll be some sort of inner brand maybe, thing. Maybe, maybe. Uh, but, I mean, but at the same time, anyone... Anyone on that roster uh, at this point? You have Carmella, who I think is is growing and doing great. Boy, has she improved since the first day I saw her. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. But Ronda Rousey, from the moment I saw her in the ring, in the wrestling ring, Mm -hmm. I've never seen anyone take to it so naturally in my entire life. At least to me, I would have to say not since Kurt Angle. Uh, and even then, Kurt Angle, how many shows was he but working? I'm talking how much training was he yeah. having before? Yeah. I'm, I'm the yeah. female or male. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think other than Kurt Angle, and maybe even more so than Kurt Angle, because of all the training that he was doing, and he was doing the, uh, you know, they had the developmental. Yes. They yeah. were, so he was yeah. working in front of small crowds. Yep. Her debut at WrestleMania. And that's oh, it. God. That's I the was first there. time doing that in front of crowds. I had and, goosebumps. You know. It was absolutely there. Ron's is amazing. Our next question comes from Jeremy Bracewell. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Hello, Jeremy Bracewell. I hope I'm saying your name correctly as well. Can the WWE save Roman Reigns without turning him heel? Yeah, I mean, already, it's up to the fans who kind of becomes what the fans have already pretty much, in my opinion, made him a heel. He's not going to change his wrestling style of what he Mm -hmm. does to make himself it's not like that anymore it used to be if the fans booed someone a wrestler just started kicking and punching more and Mm -hmm. you could tell he was going to be a bad guy now but nothing's changed with him the the question is how is he not a heel if he's continuously being booked to make the fans boo him exactly so i might say this is just a different by the version of i want to i want to mention that there i had seen some things on uh Facebook and on Twitter, uh, people saying, oh, we're sick. He beat beat Bobby Lashley, blah, blah, blah. That um, Lashley-Roman Reigns match was, to me, like an old-school wrestling match of two super heavyweights. Yeah, I thought it was was really good. Yeah, yeah. and the ending to it, if you didn't agree with it, what can I tell you? But it was was a really good, quote-unquote, hard-fought match. In kayfabe terms... That was a very believable match. Next question comes from Joseph Troncoso. Hello, Joseph Troncoso. Rumor has it that Matt Riddle is soon to be announced as being signed with WWE. What's the next big Rumor. name you think they'll go for from the indie scene? Um, I think we're gonna we're gonna count Ring of Honor, New Japan, New Japan. Pro wrestling yeah, but, as the uh, indie maybe scene. Party Marty Scroll. Okay. Uh, maybe Okada. Um, people that they, the WWE knows that the independent, see when WWE is creating almost what the National Wrestling Alliance was, where NXT is like their indie fed. Sure. And they're putting people in their indie fed and to get Mm -hmm. people in their indie fed, 
they have to look at who's at the top of the indie feds to right. romance them and bring them in. And of course, at the top, you know, you, you do <coughs> allergies. You, you all right over there? <coughs> yeah. I think I just caught your allergies. Um, the, there, there's also uh, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, but I think. By the way, wait, they have a loyalty to whatever this thing that Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks have created with All In. I don't. Kenny Omega's uh, a, a part of that. A right. I, I don't think, and I know this is Ask Aptor, not Ask Chernoff, uh, even if maybe it should be. Um, I, uh, I, I think that they will all end up in the WWE. But I think uh, they're in the beginning right of now. building their worth. Not right now. No, no, not right no, now. No, but I don't think I it's going to happen beginning. at all. I think what's going to happen now, and this is going to be a shock to the world, okay, okay, is that there really hasn't been, since WCW, a company that's really been a true competitor to the WWE. Mm-hmm. Access TV is very, very happy with their numbers for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Ring of Honor and New Japan Wrestling are married to each other pretty much. Okay, Cody Rhodes, Young Bucks, Kenny Omega are part of this whole piece here. I think that another company is going to spring up. This is not going to be the first all-in, as far as I'm concerned. I think... The last all-in, do you mean? No. Well, right, it's not going to be... Yeah, it's not going to be the last one, I'm sorry. So... Now, Ring of Honor and New Japan have got Madison Square Garden. Yes. Uh, WrestleMania weekend next week. Unheard of before. So I think what's going to happen right now is this company headed by Cody Rhodes, the Young Bucks, and Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega is going to become that what WCW was to WWE. I, I, I think that's interesting. Huh? Um, I also think that, and you know, certainly don't take advice from me, but my my opinion on it, and I, I'm sure they already know this, and you can tell by watching the product of what they're putting out there, uh, they know not to try and beat the WWE. No, you can't. They no are one will be, do that. They're, they're, they're unique. Yeah. They're a unique brand of entertainment. Mm-hmm. They're, they're a unique brand of wrestling, uh, much more wrestling mm-hmm. involved. Um, so yeah, I think but there's but but see to com- to really compete with the WWE, you have to have an equal universe of uh, TV and streaming networks, sure, etc. But I but so. I don't know that you know competition. While it, there are different ways to look at it as far as competing with the WWE, this is going to make a great podcast. Yeah, one day, you think we should do one? Yeah, yeah. Should, why not? How about September seventh? We'll do that. Let's continue this right. discussion when we premiere the podcast. Is that is there anyone or any way someone can actually compete with the WWE? And whoever our first guest is, we'll ask them. We'll ask that person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, John Fredrickson. Hey, John. Personally, what are That's some other Frederick thing? Here. Uh, I want to say the other we one had another was Frederick, Frederick this and is this Frederick. is Frederick Sin. And you have a brother named Frederick Chernoff, don't you? I do. I'm smell- He's an author. I'm smelling of some. Of the Atlantic uh, Island series. I'm, I'm smelling some. This has been brought to you by the Atlantic Island Frederick. <laughs> series. <laughs> okay, Qu- question uh, for Ask After. Yes. Um, and so says Chernoff. Yeah, there you go. go. Ahead. I'll turn my mic. Uh, personally, what are some of your most memorable moments from interviews that you've conducted and why is pro wrestling so important to you? Well, I it, it would I would be here for hours talking about the interviews. Uh, I think uh, read me the question again about the interviews. I what are some of your most memorable moments from the interviews you've conducted? Probably the the heartfelt life story of Bruno San Martino mm-hmm. and how um, he and his family escaped. From uh, the uh, the the Nazis and uh, uh, in, in Italy, uh, that was one. Uh, Magnum TA when he uh, when his career was totally stopped by his motorcycle accident, and I went to the hospital. I was the only reporter allowed into the hospital oh, wow. to interview him. Uh, those those are two of them. But then again, this is more great fada, more great topic 
to continue on when we do the podcast. It's this kind of material that you people are asking about that and, we'll go into detail. And I'll remind yeah. you that each week on the podcast, there will be, at the end, a segment called Ask After. Yeah. So again, but these are great topics. But if this is making anybody sit there and go, oh, I should ask this question. Why yeah. didn't I send that in? You're going to have your opportunity starting September 7th and yeah. every week after that. But that, like that question, that can, question. Be, that can be an entire half hour on the podcast of, of interviews. Yeah, we're just going to steal your questions people. and turn them into topics. Yeah. Uh, why is pro wrestling so important to you? That's a, that's a great question, too. It really is. When I was a, a kid, um, I watched pro wrestling in my house from probably when I was about 10 years old. And uh, my brother and father and I bonded uh, over pro wrestling. We talked about it like it was any other sport. Mm. And since childhood, it was always my dream to somehow be in pro wrestling. I wanted to be a pro wrestler. My mother and father said, this is not a nice <laughs> job for a boy like you. I uh, wanted that Antonino Rocca used to have uh, uh, his legs insured for millions of dollars. I wanted to go to the doctor and get my legs insured. <laughs> so it's because it was part of my past, part of my upbringing. And I've just always loved it. It's just something that's, I guess it's part of me. Does that make sense? I think it does. Yeah. 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 It was a great question though. Thank you. Um, yes, it was. <laughs> I didn't ask the question. You did. Uh, we have a few more here. Mike Eplin. Well, Hello, the, Mike. Will the WWE ever stop making their superstars memorize scripts? Well, do you, wait, there's more to the question. Uh, do you think they will ever go back to doing interviews and segments with bullet points like in the 90s and let the wrestlers do their thing again? Mike, that's a great question, but are you backstage? Do you know anyone back there that is giving them a script and saying, memorize this? We've all heard that, but do we know it for sure? Wasn't there a story, though, about when you saw Chris Jericho? They were giving Chris Jericho an idea of what they wanted him to say. And, and I should also say that this was years ago. Ages was, and ages yeah. ago. Ages and ages. But they were giving him an idea of what they had in mind for him to say. Right. Uh, line for line, yeah, they said if he could do that, great. But if not, put it in your own words, which he's a master so, of. So wait, wait. So, so I think what happens is that they're given, you know, this is what we're doing tonight. Uh, here's what we'd like you to say. But I don't think these guys, two hours before they go out on a Monday Night Raw, can memorize this word for word. Well, I, you know, I have in heard, I've heard uh, people in the WWE say that that is what's going on, that they are being given full scripts to memorize. Um, there are times... I will admit there are, and I'm not slipping away from this because I'm okay. the master of kayfabe. No, but mm -hmm. uh, but there are times that um, guys will have to memorize something that might be weeks away. But when they're doing something where they're going out in one hour or two hours uh, out to be on Monday Night Raw, uh, they're given uh, this is a script. Look it over. This is what we need you to say. Okay. So it's not, it doesn't necessarily mean word for word. Would you agree, though, um, with, with Mike here that there was once upon a time a little more leniency oh, with, with these wrestlers? Yes, that, yeah, not just in that, WWE. And, and would you say, so, um, because, and, and I understand what you're saying completely, but not to get hung up on whether or not it is a full script or just, you know, an idea. Yeah. But it's certainly more uh, dictated to them than it, than used, it used to, to be. be. Okay. And do you think that these wrestlers, do you think the products lost something because no, of that? No, no, no. Do you think the wrestlers don't have an opportunity to grow as performers the way that maybe they used to be able to? Okay, so here's my take on this. First of all, like I just said, none of us are backstage. Right. Okay? No matter what we hear. Can we do none, something about that? Right. None, none of us that are is... backstage to, to know specifically unless some WWE wrestler calls us and says, this is the way it is. We don't really know. Okay? Okay. Okay. So, and yes, am I backstage periodically? Sure. Do I see that? I haven't seen that. Okay, okay? but again, you do think that it's different than it used to be. Yeah, that's where I was getting to now. Wait, okay. wait, wait. Okay. So, and again, this is a great podcast topic. Back in the old NWA days, mm -hmm. when I was sitting there at the TV tapings and even at WWWF, 
the guys would be told, give me a minute and a half of uh, why you're going to beat Gorilla Monsoon tonight, right. okay? And then the guy would get on, you know something, Monsoon? And they'd go right for it. That doesn't happen anymore. The creativity part from the wrestler is not as prevalent, especially in the WWE. Do you think it's because the wrestlers are not as creative or they're no. not being given the opportunity to be Exactly. Creative? I think this is the way the business is run right now is sports entertainment. This is... As they call it, it's a show, and this is the way we want things done. This and is a whole hour. Yeah. Uh, this is we're another gonna, thing. We're, yeah, we're gonna. We'll do this on the podcast. Yeah. that's an entire show. Will yeah, be this great, great question. And we will get a topic. WWE talent on, maybe a former one, to discuss exactly what goes on backstage. Yeah, I think that's, that's great. That. Yeah. All right. Uh, second to last one here, Scott Beams. Hey, Scott, and I heard you do. You beam when you walk into a room. Unbelievable. So what specific in wrestling made Bill want to become a wrestling journalist? And he does have a follow-up question as well, but let's start with that one. So that was, I bought the first issue of Wrestling Review at Sunnyside Garden in the 60s when I was a kid. Hmm. I looked at that. I bought two copies because I tore out all the pictures, put them up on the uh, the wall, all the great pinups and everything sure. in there. But as soon as I saw that, I said, you know what, if I can't become a wrestler, this is it. Now, would you mind hand, handing me that magazine right Absolutely. there on, under on the photo? So right now I only work for one specific magazine, and it's actually published in uh, England, and it's Total Wrestling Magazine. So uh, you can go to Total Wrestling Magazine on Facebook or on uh, Twitter or wherever, and I have a, an exclusive column every month in there called The After Files. Excellent. Yeah, and this month... Always a good read. Yeah, this... Well, I hope so. And this month, I talk about uh, Big Van Vader. Ah, uh, yes. Vader, Leon White. So we miss him. Okay, enough plug there. Sorry. All right. Second no, part that's, of the question. No problem. I, uh, Magazines have stayed this, with me since a, I was a kid. Yeah, and this is what a podcast is all about. It's about yeah. plugging things. This is a vodcast you know? right now. Yeah. I mean, like, we could go... This would be a beautiful segue to go into our shirts, you know, You're right. the, well, uh, we at, are wearing shirts. The afterchat.com. You can get yes. some great shirts. Yes. Anyway. And respect the comb over. Don't forget that. It's a shirt. Uh, oh, yeah. this was not, I don't believe this was another uh, question exactly. Oh, Scott says, when I met you at the street fair a few months ago, you told me oh. about helping the headhunters get to Japan. I would love to hear that entire story. We'll do that on a podcast. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, meeting you in Astoria, if I remember the street fair. I was walking with um, um, several people, and uh, I had on a baseball cap, unrecognizable, and some guy came over, Bill Apter. It was him. Oh, there you yeah. go. Thank you for uh, for stopping me that day, and we've become Facebook friends. And thank you for liking Facebook.com slash the Apter chat. We really do genuinely appreciate that from all of you. Yes. Uh, last question here, Brandon Dack. Hey, Bill. What did you Hello, think? Hello, Brandon Dack. What did you Welcome think? Welcome back. What did you think of the Impact Wrestling Slammiversary pay-per-view? I ordered Impact Wrestling Slammiversary pay-per-view through the Fight TV app, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed the pay-per-view from start to finish. What did you think? They have really upped their game since Anthem Entertainment has taken them over. Mm -hmm. It seems to be they're invigorated again uh, from top to bottom. It was a very exciting card, so I hope that Impact Wrestling can keep this momentum going because they're... Uh, uh, they're becoming quite a force, and they're going to be touring again soon. I know they're coming to uh, upstate New York. Uh, okay. They're coming to uh, uh, they're coming to New York City to to Queens. Really? Yeah. Yes. Do yeah. You know where? Gonna, I don't know. Uh, I think it's the Melrose Ballroom, or go to uh, ImpactWrestling dot com and click on the tour, and it will be there. All right. And Big Ray Hernandez from OneWrestling.com will be in attendance that night covering for OneWrestling.com. Good yeah. to know. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much again. Wait a minute. We're done? Yeah, that's it. I, we wow. had to cut it off at some point here. We do. We yeah, do. We have more questions, and we're saving them for September 7th. Thank you all again for liking us on Facebook and if you're liking what you're hearing and what you're seeing, if you don't like what you're seeing, that's great because it's an audio podcast that's, that's dropping true. September 7th. Yes. Uh, we would love to be able to pop up here again on Facebook. Wait a minute. You keep saying dropping. I'm an old radio guy. It's airing 
on September 7th? Dropping, airing. Okay. I believe it. We'll drop airing. You're thinking like a CD. Drops to your kids know what a CD is. No, go to Google. Yeah. yeah. And also go to theafterchat.com if you want Please to get do. any of the new shirts that you can see on the screen here. They are, uh, they're really something, uh, something else. I'm excited about them. So now we have to see if he's learned this wrestling fix. I didn't know it was broken. We'll see you at the matches.